without the armor, but just as deadly. Here's your look at the Hyatt Toys Exquisite Mini Predators Crucified Predator. Exquisite Mini is a new standard setting series for 118th scale, featuring super articulation action figures under Hyatt Toys. There's going to be a lot to talk about and plenty of details to show off, but, but before we do that though, of course, I'm going to take my trusty tape measure and put it right to the very top of the Predator. We're going to stop it right there. There we go. And according to the readouts, what you're looking at for the Crucified Predator is a figure that stands 5.6 inches. So it's about five and a half inches in height. We can switch that over to centimeters and you're looking then at the predator being 14.3 so it's about again 14 and a half centimeters tall now the figure that we're going to be looking at in this review is the predator's crucified predator not too long ago though we did have a look at the exquisite mini predator's armored crucified predator so of course i'll move this one over and we'll bring in the armored version of this so you can see there is differences between the two Perhaps you could say from the lower half, from the torso down, lower torso down, but at the waist side, the figure's pretty much going to be the exact same. Although from the waist up, they have really stripped down, taken off all the armor that would have protected the Predator and, of course, removed his helmet. And that gives us, of course, the regular Crucified Predator that we're going to be looking at in this review. Most of the figure's accessories stay about the same to the one that we looked at with the armored. Of course, like all other exquisite minis, you're going to be getting yourself quite the exquisite looking diorama stand. It is of a muddy terrain, so you can see there. And it's really no, not different at all from the one that we looked at earlier, or any of the Predators for that matter. There is still, of course, that singular peg at the top there that's going to attach to the peg hole on the underside of the Predator's feet. Flipping it upside down, it's pretty much just hollow plastic, but you'll also see there's some slotted areas on all the sides of the display base. New people collecting these will probably not recognize this right away, but they do come included with these little eye brackets. The eye brackets are supposed to fit then into these slots, and if you have more than one of these display bases, you can then connect them together. This way, this way, this way, and this way down below. So it really is just a matter of how many of these bases you actually have at your disposal for how big of a terrain and diorama that you can set up for your Predator figures. And really, you don't have to even necessarily use them for the Predator figures either. You could use these display stands for some of the other exquisite mini figures that Hyatt Toys are also producing. So I like that. I always like these type of stands that they include with. Then, of course, you get a couple of swappable hands. It's not quite the same swappable hands as the one that came included with the armored version. Now, this one does have kind of like a thumbs up. It's a bit strange because it's a gripping hand, and yet it doesn't have any other accessories at its disposal or comes packaged with. So really, this open hand doesn't serve too much of a purpose. The other one, though, being just a closed fist. The last of the accessories, I'm so glad to see that they included this, is actually his removable helmet carefully as always I do I want to make sure I don't drop this and fall it onto the floor but you get the uh, the helmet there the interior of the helmet the exterior of the helmet and it does have that broken away area on the one side now going ahead and retrieving the armored version of this figure that we looked at earlier if you line up everything it actually fits the same damaged open area in fact not that I can really do this successfully in front of a camera it is in fact the same cutout I think that's a fun little touch that they included. Now, unlike this one, this one was already permanently attached to its head, so it didn't have the means to remove it from his face. This one, on the other hand, doesn't have the means to attach to his face. You can see by the fact that it's got the open mandibles like this, there really is no way to attach the helmet. So it cer certainly serves more than as just a standalone piece. And then, going back to that hand that we looked at earlier, where I it's strange that the fact that he didn't come with any other accessories. Technically, he does come included with the hand, and he comes included with the helmet. So what you could also do, too, is detach this hand from the peg. When you're doing this, you will want to be careful, because they're really small pegs. Attach the replacement hand, providing, of course, I can get it on there. If you have difficulties, by the way, at, at any given point with these exquisite minis getting the hands back in place, I would certainly recommend heating the hands in hot water. Um, just enough to soften up the socket joint. 
And then from there, just a little bit of paint that's flaked off, you can then take the helmet and you can fit that into his hand. So it does give him at least an available option to attach or display at least with the helmet. You can see he does hold it in his hand. Not the strongest of grips, mind you, if you bang the figure or you're taking it off the shelf, the helmet may actually fall off in the process, but at least it does give him something to hold the helmet with, going then back to the reason why they included that hand in the first place. So let's go ahead and put that to the side. We'll get a closer look now at the at the crucifix predator. I keep wanting to throw armored in the front of it, and I guess probably I should have reversed the process of looking at what these figures were. I should have looked at maybe this version of the figure first, and then maybe looked at the armored version after the fact, but it doesn't really matter necessarily. You're essentially getting the same body of figure, though without the armor, I can't help but notice that the crucifix predator without armor seems to be a little bit thicker. There we go, going back to the same topic point of it being thick figures. All of really the predator figures, predators with plural, the S on the end of it, tend to be thicker figures anyways than the regular predators they've done before. So you get a much bigger looking torso, and you actually get a lot bigger on the limbs as well, both the arms and the legs as well. First, we'll have a look, though, at the face, talk a little bit about that for a second. It's a nice looking head sculpt for a three and three quarter inch scale figure. It has some really nice detailing and equally some pretty good looking paint as well. The little speckles across the, the helmet of his head, for example. That crest of his head does have some really nice spotting, both in the lighter brown and as well as the darker black there as well. Love the fact that they give him the open mandibles. He definitely looks like a very ticked off predator. And of course, like all other predators, he does have the dreads on the back there as well. Each individually strand is plastic. So each of them move independently from one another. Detail work also can be a little bit more seen here on this Predator versus the Armored Predator. Let's just bring that one back in so you can see the difference. Of course, this one did have the armor, the plasma cast or shoulder-mounted cannon on the back of its torso. This one does not have it. So it then gives us then the opportunity to see some additional paint work on the back of the figure. It doesn't look like too much does change between the figures. So it's not just the fact that the armor was removed. Essentially, it looks to be the same figure underneath all of it. Now this one does have also the additional Yaucha blood, which you can see on the front of its torso here. It doesn't seem to make any other appearance anywhere else. So if anything, the wounds are really only inflicted around this area of the figure's body. The paint is pretty good on it. I'm not sure though, the green seems a bit lost. I don't know if I would have made the green just a little bit lighter. But the fact that they did give him like damage treatment to the torso, it really is a nice touch though. Now he is missing his gauntlets on both sides, the one with the blade, the one with the control panel. Those are both missing as well. But pretty much though, like I said earlier, from his waist down, it's the same figure. Again, if you didn't believe me, shame on you. We can have a look at the lower torso here. I'd be hard pressed to really see if there's any differences between the two. Maybe paint, if anything, for the one that's unarmored. You can see that the paint, the silver, seems a little bit more brighter than the one that has the armor. But other than that, though, there's not much that does change between the two figures from like this point to this point. For the figure's articulation, let's have a look at that right now. The crucifix predator rotates its head all the way around. It hinges up and it hinges down. And certainly one of the things that works to its favor is the fact it doesn't have all the additional armor. It doesn't have it on the shoulders. It doesn't have the plasma caster shoulder mounted cannon. I always feel the need to say the whole thing. It's missing the, the shoulder cannon, so that also does give it a little bit more mileage when it comes to rotating the head and moving it around. The upper torso is also on a ball joint. The lower torso also on a ball joint. You can bring the arms out quite easily beyond the point of a 90 degree angle bend. Looks like he's taking a victory lap. You can rotate the arms all the way around. A swivel on the bicep. Now again, going to these elbows, this is something that we did talk about in the Armored Predator, Armored Crucifix Predator review. The way that they've done these now, there seems to be like these little silver ringlets on the inside of the joints. They have it on both the elbows and the knees. It may be there just to reinforce things so the pegs, the pegs don't actually break. Let's see right there. He does technically have a hinge joint, but similar to when we looked at the Armored Predator, can't get this first hinge joint to bend. This one's fine. This one right here, I have a little bit more struggle trying to get that to bend. 
Um, the hands, though, rotate all the way around, even though this isn't the hand that we started with. Thumbs up, by the way. For the legs, the legs split out. You can bring the legs forward and back. There is also a swivel where that, that thigh is attached by the ball peg. You can swivel it up the top there as well. Double hinge on the knee. Again, there's those little ringlets of gold on the inside. Um, the one thing you will want to be careful of, and I've just done it myself, if you bring the knee too far forward in that full bend swing, this little part of the plastic here, the inside of the thigh, sort of gets caught up top here. I'm just bringing it out a little bit so you can see it. See that little lip of plastic? It leaves then a gap right there. If you bring then the knee forward, sometimes it gets hung up. It gets caught along the top area here. So you will want to make sure you just sort of tuck that back in when you bring the legs back forward. Finally, the feet do rotate all the way around. You can hinge them up and down, and you can also ankle pivot them. Always, always nice the amount of articulation that you get with these figures. So there is the Crucifix Predator. Just before we wrap up things and take things to the rotisserie, we can bring in the armored Crucifix version of him. And you can see it's just a matter of picking your poison. Both of them actually are great looking figures. And I like that in a case like the regular Crucifix version of Predator, this one right here, they didn't just give him a brand new head sculpt and kept all the armor still intact. No, if he's going to be a crucified Predator, you're really going to want to strip him down. And it's nice to see the Hyatoys did do that with the regular release of the Crucifix Predator. By the way, nice touch on Haya's part to package the Crucified Predator with that battle damage face mask that he can hold in his hand. I know I said earlier into this review, why would they have given them the open hand like that? Because he doesn't come with any other accessories. It's clearly there to hold the face mask. And that's going to be the way, like I said, the way I'm going to display the figure for my collection. The Predators, though, exquisite mini of Crucified Predator and the Armored Predator. I'm happy to also see that they don't share the same bodies. Well, they do and they don't. They use many of the same molds, but clearly... They definitely went with the design of having this one stripped right down. They could have just done a simple head swap. And I know simple is not as probably the best way to describe a brand new head sculpt, but they could have easily just swapped one head sculpt out and put the other one in and just kept the rest of the body the exact same as the other. But they didn't, and I'm glad that they did. I'm glad to see that they gave us a brand new body, one of which, if you're going to be, after all, calling him the Crucified Predator, it would make no real sense to have him with all the armor and the gauntlet blades and stuff all on him. No, you're going to want to strip him down. And they also throw threw in a little bit of battle damage, a little bit of Yaoja blood also on his torso. Again, a really nice touch. The Predators, that is, of course, with the S on the end of it, tend to be, again, bigger, bulkier looking exquisite minis than some of the other Predator figures that we have and just happen to be also my favorite of the Predators that Hyatt Toys are putting out so far. Have you picked up the Exquisite Mini Crucified Predator? If you have, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of it, or whether you prefer the armored version of this guy or the unarmored Crucified Predator. Let me know, weigh in your thoughts down below in the comments section. Again, a big thank you to the folks over at Haya Toys that provided the sample of the Crucifix Predator that we could look at in this review. If you guys are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below turn the bell notification on and keep your peepers peeled because there will be in fact more Predator exquisite mini reviews lined up and coming your way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.